All right. Up next here will be uh, head coach from Virginia, Lars Tiffany. We'll get coach all set up here. Coach, I'm going to make you a panelist here. So you should be asked to rejoin as a panelist. All right. We got you. Got you unmuted. All right. Can we hear you, coach? Give us a little test. Yes, I can hear you, Marcus. Good to see you. Beautiful. Yes, good to see you too. And thank you for joining us today, Coach. Um, we'll go ahead and get started. And if you could just kind of give us a general opening statement. Uh, general opening statement. I <laughs> realize I can I can hear the other coach talking. So uh, I'm not sure when Coach Corgan will be watching and listening to me. So I'm going to be a little more guarded than normal. Um, you know, I've always tried to challenge myself to not be, uh, you know, too boring and too uh, basic with my commentary. But uh, this one feels a little different with the other coach peering in. Um, we are, uh, we are thrilled, uh, to be back here and, uh, it's, um, it, it's, it, there's, there's an expectation here that I get a little concerned about, you know, it's like, cause I'm listening to Connor Schellenberger the other day say, well, you know, there's some guys on our team have won two national championships. I've only won one. And there's first years and second years, what we call freshmen and sophomores who don't, they haven't been to the final four yet, you know, and then they have, they don't have a national championship and, you know, they're hungry for it. And, uh, you know, I love that attitude I, and, and, I, and I, that, that drive and that nerve, really, to, to say that publicly. And, uh, um, and uh, you know, it makes me a little uneasy, but I, I love that because that is what we've established here, you know, building on the tradition of what, you know, way back to Ace Adams and Glenn Thiel and certainly Dom Starja and, and propelling that forward. Can we have the mindset where pressure is a privilege? where we are the pressure, that we embrace this time of year, and then we just have fun with it. We just cut, cut it loose, let it rip, and say, hey, we've worked really hard for this. You know, Let's have fun. Let's enjoy it. And uh, the biggest stage is our stage. Awesome. Thanks for that, Coach. We'll jump into the question portion, and we'll start with Patrick Stevens. Lars, how are you doing this morning? Hey, Patrick, good morning. I uh, wanted to ask about Grayson Soliday and the comeback that he had from his injury last year. Uh, how remarkable in your mind was it that he was standing out there uh, on, on February 11th? And just what has he meant to your program and, and what sort of legacy has he crafted for you guys over the last five years? Well, I appreciate you asking about Grayson. He is the captain. We, we have four, Connor Schellenberger, Kate Sostead, uh, Cole Kastner, join him. But no matter whether you have two, three, or four captains, there's always one man you really lean on, one man who has the pulse of the team, one man who speaks truth to power, the backbone, who's willing to make the tough conversations uh, happen with me, and that's Grayson. And he's done that for two years now. Um, and so he is the Dave Smith uh, who we had in 19, or the John Fox we had in 2021. Interestingly, they're all short 60 middies. Maybe there's a personality trait that's attracted or willing to do that job. And um, and so having him back is is so critical. Now, what he did was pretty close to miraculous. And, uh, you know, for me, what I've experienced when when a man injures his ACL, it's uh, it's a 10 to 12 month. You hear nine months, but that's just meaning you're now you're able to practice full speed, but not game speed for 12 months. You know, that's what Ryan Conrad took and Ryan Conrad rehabilitated and worked endlessly. Well, somehow Grayson topped him and um, having surgery in early June to really being full go in early February uh, blew the doctors away, like eight months, full speed, no, re no restrictions. And, um, and the lead tests, the, the, the UVA personnel hadn't seen anyone do what he did. And so, um, yeah, it's, that was, that was, that was really, really critical for our team and uh, I'm really, really happy for Grayson. Thanks much, Lars. You're welcome. We're going to move on to Preston Willett. Hey, Lars. Uh, I feel like a month ago we were talking about how hard it is to beat a team twice in one season. Now you have a third chime against Notre Dame. What is the, kind of the mental hurdles that, that there are playing a team for a third time? I don't really know, to tell you the truth. You know, I, I've, I've been challenging people. Usually, um, when people are asking me about Duke, they say, hey, coach, it's really hard to beat a team a third time. I'm like, really? I don't know that. You know, I hear that saying 
somebody show me the data, show me through the statistical, you know, assessments of professional and college and high school sports over the last hundred years that proves that, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> and so it's interesting playing them, playing a really talented team like Notre Dame a third time. It's, it's, it's really easy for me. Um, and I hope my team to ignore the first two and just use that as information in terms of slide packages, um, uh, matchups, but, um, but I certainly know our men know we, we, th those have been battles that they've been tie ball games, you know, well into the third quarter that we were fortunate enough to, uh, the ball went in on our shots later in the third and early in the fourth to pull away and build up a lead. But, you know, these are two really, really talented teams are very evenly matched. So, uh, yeah, the histories on these games, um, I'm trying to ignore. And, and, you know, hopefully you guys are asking me the same question on Sunday as we're getting ready to play a Duke team that we obviously don't have a great history play against. And I'm going to say the same thing. We're going to ignore the history. All right, moving on to Jeff White. Hey, Lars, good morning. Uh, good morning Jeff. A common denominator in most, if not all of UVA's NCAA titles and men's lacrosse has been fantastic goalie play in the final four. You had Rode twice, Tillman Johnson, Gittleman, Kip, Rodney Roman. Uh, is it almost essential, even with all your offensive firepower, that Matthew have a good weekend? You guys are going to beat these teams? Yeah, absolutely. I, 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 I've had friends of mine pick on me you know Lars you're, you're a good coach when you have a all-american goalie you know and uh, if you look back to my my time at Brown you know our best years uh Jack Kelly there at, at the end in 2015 and 16 who made first team all-american Jordan Burke in 09 uh was Ivy League player of the year twice in a row um it, it you know uh, yeah I'm a, I'm a whole lot better as a coach and our defense is a whole lot better when you got somebody behind you who's making those saves and and uh, what a joy it's been to see really starting with the first time we played Notre Dame uh, this season for Matt Nunes. We went into that Notre Dame game out there in South Bend, Indiana, you know, not feeling too comfortable where Matt was at that point. And boy, did he step up in that game? And then ever since the month of April and so far here in May, um, he's just not letting shots go in uh, that he's got a good chance at, and he's seeing the ball really well. Um, and so the confidence grows as you know, from the people in front of them. Now we can press out a little bit more. Now we can give up a shot and not have to be perfect. So we can defend what the knowns are and maybe, okay, well, let them take that shot because we'll probably make that save. Um, you know, we saw that last week, you know, Tucker Dordovich scores the first goal left-handed, the first shot he takes left-handed, and it went, but it was through a screen. It was like an NHL shot. And I was like, fellas, just let them keep shaking that. That's okay. And, and Matt News you know, made me look good because he made the next couple of saves on those type of shots. And uh, um, yeah, so it's just, it really, really is critical to be, uh, to be playing well in the goal. All right, moving on to David Teal. Lars, regarding your, your opening statement about the privilege of pressure, is that almost something that is department wide at UVA? given all the national championships that are won? And, and how much interaction is there among coaches and exchange of ideas? I wish there was more. I will admit to you, during COVID, we had an incredible exchange of ideas, obviously all via Zoom. But it was like, okay, now we can take advantage of each other and really lean on each other. I, you know, whether it was uh, uh, women swimming and diving and men swimming and diving, you know, what they do with recruiting and their social media. Um, I remember women's volleyball had some great ideas for recruiting and official visits and, and mindset. I wish that we could have kept that going once we all got back to being really busy. There is some of it though. And, and it's, it is, there, there's like an underlying current without actual sit down head coach with all the uh, meetings and assistant coaches. I wish we could do more of, but there is that, you know, that, and, and I've heard George Jelanovich say, you know, after we won the night title in 19 is like, man, that Virginia's lacrosse winning one makes me know we can get back there again. And it makes me really motivated to do it again, you know? And, uh, and, and so, right. You see tennis doing it and swimming and diving doing it. And it's certainly Tony Bennett four years ago. Part of it also just helps you believe, but, but yes, pressure is a privilege is something that, um, you know, something that we truly believe of men's across 
and we've harped on. And I love it when coaches do once in a while come in and, hey, coach, I'm struggling with this. Um, bam. Hey, hammer that home. Turn the pressure from a negative into a positive. Say, this is why we got into this business. This is why your men and women joined your team because they wanted to come to Virginia. If they didn't want pressure, they should have gone somewhere else. So I talk about it right from the recruiting process, you know, that we're going to hold you to a higher standard with what you do academically and socially decisions because I'm going to put more pressure on you. And if you're not ready for that pressure, then this is the wrong place because our expectation levels are much different. And so we, we kind of embrace it, but then we turn into a joyful thing. Like this is, you know, let's, let, let, let's enjoy, embrace this pressure. This is what we dreamt about when we were seven years old or eight years old and out there with a stick or a basketball dreaming we were making a game winning shot. We wanted that pressure at that age. You want it now. All right, we got a cup time for a couple more questions here with coach. We're going to start with, we're going to start with Drew Brennan. Hey, Coach Tiffany, how you doing? Drew Brennan here from uh, One Foot Down. I uh, hope your morning is going well. Thanks for spending the time with us. Um, in the last 21 games, Notre Dame is 18-3 uh, and three, with all three of those losses coming against UVA. And for the most part, your defense has held Notre Dame to under what they typically average from a scoring standpoint. What do you think it is about your defense that has allowed you to be so successful against Notre Dame uh, from an offensive standpoint? Yeah, it's tough to tell, you know, because Coach Corgan's offense has scored a ton of goals and uh, they've got multiple weapons, um, you know, starting with obviously with the Cavanaugh's and Jake Taylor roaming on the inside, guys who can bring the heat from the outside, starting with Dobson and, and a bunch of other middies. And um, yeah, I, I just, it, it's hard to pinpoint, you know, just like we, it's hard to pinpoint why is, why do we struggle so much with Duke, um, you know, and, uh, and, and then we see Notre Dame turn around and just smack the Blue Devils. Um, just about every time they play him. So it's, um, you know, we certainly played well in the goal. Uh, Matt News had 19 saves last time we played uh, Notre Dame. And um, so you got to play well in the goal. And um, yeah, I, I, I wish I had a better answer for you. You know, it's, um, you know, the, 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 only, the only concrete one I can tell you is, you know, we, we do have a 6'6 defender and a 6'7 defender and Kate Sawstad and Cole Caster. And, and um, you know, maybe there's something there that they're reached they're able to get to uh, Chris and Pat's hands a little bit more than maybe some other defenders because those guys are so talented with their hands free. Um, so maybe maybe having a stick on those two gloves, but they're, Notre Dame's more than just those two players. So um, we're, whatever it is, we're hoping that mojo keeps going the, the Virginia Cavalier way. All right, we're going to close out with Coach Tiffany with Mike Barber. Uh, hey, coach, real quick, couple of words I got to fire at you. Um, you said last week that this team was was really good at changing a little bit so you look different for the opponent, but not changing wholesale so you confuse yourselves. How much does having older players kind of help that process? It, it, it's, it, it's, it's tremendously helpful. If, if I've got a younger team and when I've had a younger team, if I try to tweak a few little things and all of a sudden I get the – thousand mile stare or the really confused look back at me i'm like oh god i have screwed things up um you know trying to get a little more complex and i've just uh, the, the this deck of cards is just falling apart you know the house of cards i should say so uh, when i've got an older team you know you can say hey 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 you know maybe uh maybe in the clear let's see if we can stretch over a little earlier you know like we did against carolina and within about two minutes of one or two reps they're like oh, oh yeah we got it. oh yeah i remember that okay got it good and so it just allows us to be more efficient and to have the review be a little smoother. And it also allows me when I do make a mistake and I do over, over tinker and I get the, and then I get like eight guys looking at me funny. I'm like, okay, they should, they would know if I was being clear. <laughs> and, and that happened. We were, we were getting ready for the, uh, you know, for one of the games this year. And, you know, we, we had made a little adjustment and uh, in the clearing and riding game. And I was like, oh boy. Uh, yeah, no, no, I, I, I screwed this up. <laughs> Whereas if I had a younger team, I'm like, uh, they just don't understand. I just got, I got to practice this more and more and more. And, and so again, that was great to have the veteran leadership because then I was like, like, you know what? I've got seven or eight really good players who are with me for a long time. looking at me confused. Okay. Forget that. Scratch that. Okay. Let's go. You know, let's go back to, you know, and, um, so it's, it's really wonderful to having that experience. Um, and, and we are, we, we do have a lot of experience on this team. So we're enjoying that benefit. You know, coach, 
Kerwin and I talk about it all the time. That it's so nice on the offense, defense, whatever phase, we can just make a make a few little adjustments and not have to spend, you know, a couple practices on it. And you guys were the number one nation, uh, number one offense in the nation, even when Connor wasn't practicing, when he wasn't full strength. Um, what has changed with him back? Is it a challenge at all? Because now there's even more mouths to feed. And, and what does it say about the depth of your offense that you were that good when he was limited? Yeah, I think a lot of it is Coach Kerwin. You know, it's uh, Sean Kerwin. He's um, no, no, I, I, I hate to call anyone a genius who stands on a lacrosse sideline. <laughs> you know, hopefully they're they're working for NASA. But uh, man, he really, really does a wonderful job of putting our men in position. And key, they buy in. You know, it's if if you get the amount of talent that we're fortunate to recruit and to bring here to Charlottesville, you know, sometimes you're like, well, let's just let them play. You know, and or maybe they're a little resistant to being structured. Um, but Sean does a nice balance of giving him structure, but with some freedom within that and, uh, and putting him in those positions. So when Connor wasn't playing great or was hurt against North Carolina, that one game, you know, he, he adjusts the offense and puts him in the right position. So I give a lot of credit to, to Sean for sure with what he able to, what, what he's able to do at his disposal, but yes, he's very lucky. Uh, he's got a lot of weapons at his disposal. Awesome. Thank you, Coach, for joining us. That concludes Coach Tiffany's questions portion here for the press conference. Coach, we look forward to seeing you in Philly and safe travels out there. Yeah. Thank you, Marcus.